this this particular mushroom um, has a much more sort of rather than this sort of typical hallucinogenic tropes that we're used to understanding, like the walls move, the floors move, the colors are brighter. There's this kind of synesthesia where colors have sound. Yes, that's all there. But an added bonus to this is somehow this expanded consciousness that you begin to experience seems to allow a kind of gateway that opens into the consciousness of some of your fellow players, which is kind of interesting. Now, this is not a kind of, this is not a kind of clairvoyance. This is not a kind of, I'm inside of uh, Trifon's head. It's not like that. I don't want to be in there. No, it's not like that. It's not that invasive. But there seems to be this fluid ebb and flow of a kind of crossover in and out. So for a moment, as you look across the room at Trifon, who's there and not high, you almost feel like your consciousness melds with his momentarily. You can't read his thoughts, Do but I you feel, feel this? almost at one. No, no. because Chilling. you're not experienced. Yeah, Chilling. you don't. You don't understand. Oh, can we look at each other? <laughs> like, yeah, what like... happens if we look at each? So when you look at each other, when you look at each other, it is actually much more intense. So the fluidity doesn't. <laughs> the fluidity doesn't ebb and flow as quickly. You're able to sort of move into that consciousness space, move about it a bit, and so momentarily. When, Remy, you are inside of Cersei's consciousness, <laughs> you, you feel like time speeds. You feel like this rapid pace of a boom, 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 boom. And it's, it's almost a little bit disconcerting because you have this very mellow, laid back kind of trip that you're having right now, but boom, you pass into that space and it's like, and it's strange. You're not quite sure what that is. You don't feel that when you're inside of Trifon space or had you gone into uh -huh. Throod space or Brand's space. We so we'll do this. Yes. <laughs> so there's something really strange going on there. You experience something as you pass into Remy's space that is also equally kind of um, um, tangible on some level, less less fleeting mm -hmm. as it would be with someone who is not experiencing the trip. And as you go into Remy's space, you encounter what seem to be glances and looks from people that you don't recognize that look like they're trying to avoid making eye contact with you. So it's like being at a party and you're looking around the room and as soon as someone sees you, they look away. Something's being hidden from you and you're not entirely sure what it is, but it's really uncomfortable and it makes you feel almost awkward. So in both of these situations, as you cross into each other's consciousness, there is a kind of awkwardness that you don't understand, but you want to get away from. Because once out of that consciousness of the other person, you feel great. This is crazy. Uh, like, uh... So it's like, am I sort of experiencing just her like headspace from her perspective. So when it feels like something's being hidden from me, that would imply that something's being hidden from her. Mm, roll a perception check for oh. me with advantage because you're in this expanded consciousness. Oh. All right, hold on. What's my, <laughs> what's my perception? Okay. Sorry. We're just go chilling in, in the room. Just go a 19. Let's go. It does feel that way. It does feel like what you're experiencing is possibly something that either Remy denies or is unaware of, but you feel like you are actually sitting inside of her consciousness momentarily. Similarly, inside of Cersei's, that rapid fire speed thing that's unfolding, this is very hard for you to understand, but you feel like that is indicative of Cersei's consciousness. ADHD just bouncing off the walls. <laughs> it's actually far <laughs> faster than that. And it's not bouncing off the walls because it it's implies direct. it's organized. Mm. Oh. 